Uh, hey guys, we're here with our week one battle up against Nuflus, aka the coach of the Accrington Stantler. Uh, so this is week one in the GPSL. I'm very excited, I'm very start. Ex I guess I'm still very excited, but I'm very excited to get things started. Um, I want to win, I want to do well, I'm very excited. So, real quick, let's go over New Fluss's team. He has Mega Venusaur, Lander Therian, Heatran, Bisharp, Toxicroak, Empoleon, Hydreigon, Jolteon, Registeel, Embor, Miss Magius, and Swello. So, first initial things on his team I notice is that he doesn't really have a lot that can handle Mega Lopunny effectively besides that Mega Venusaur. And and if Lander Asterion were to get the Intimidate drop on me, it could lift some hits if it were EV correctly. Um, so that's immediately the first thing I put on my team. So here we have Vanilla, our Mega Lopunny, with Limber for its ability, which uh, prevents it from being paralyzed just in case, like Jolteon is Thunder Wave. And that's only before it Mega Balls. Once it Mega Balls, it'll have Scrappy. And then I can hit the Miss Magius if, I, if he brings it. Um, we have Fake Out, Low Kick, Ice Punch, and Return. Fake Out for obvious reasons, fake, to fake stuff out, get some flinches, get off the Mega Evolution, get some cheap damage I don't really deserve. Um, return is just for general stab. Low Kick hits all four of his Steel types for at least a two-hit KO, as well as the High Dragon for a two-hit KO. I believe that's it. But then, um, and then Ice Punch is for the Landorus. Um, it will actually two-hit KO if I don't have the Intimidate drop. It's a three-hit KO otherwise. Um, in our EVs, we have Max Attack, 116 into Defense, and 140 into Speed with a Jolly Nature. That speed will outspeed his entire team except for Choice Scarf like Jolteon, Hydreigon, Landorus, a lot of different Choice Scarfers. So worst case scenario, if I get outsped and die, at least I know that they're Choice Scarfed, locked into a move, and I can plan for that accordingly. Um, and then Max Attack, just to do as much damage as possible, increase my damage output, and then uh, 116 in defense, because I don't really have much to do with it. I guess I could take some hits better for maybe the Bisharp, or the Toxicroak if he brings it, things like that. But moving on, we have Excalibur, our Skarmory, holding the leftovers with the ability Sturdy, and has Stealth Rock, Spikes, Defog, and Brave Bird. Um, Stealth Rock and Spikes are meant to hazard stack. The idea is, is that he will have to Defog them away because he doesn't have any Rapid Spinners. He only has Swellow and Empoleon with Defog that can get rid of hazards. And I can take advantage of that with my Milotic, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, Defog is in case I need to get rid of hazards on my side if they're becoming overwhelming. And Brave Bird, just for general stab, to hit a few things. Skarmory isn't meant to deal out damage, it's meant to wall things. It'll probably be a switch into things like U-Turn. And otherwise, it's uh, good to prevent... It's, it's a good wall to Landorus because even a Stone Edge will, only, will do less than half. And I can recover that back up with leftovers and hit it with some brave birds, deal a little damage, set up rocks, whatever I need to do. Uh, but the EVs, it has 80 into HP, 176 into attack, and 252 into defense with an adamant nature. It's kind of a weird EV set, especially since I just said it's not meant to do damage, so why give it an adamant nature? Well, 176 attack and an adamant nature is guaranteed the 2 hit KO that Mega Venusaur with brave bird. Even if it's max HP, max defense, bold. And that's assuming that Mega Venusaur didn't use like Giga Drain or stuff like that. It um, it does 50% minimum to the Mega Venusaur, so that's why those EVs are like that. The rest are just to increase my physical defensive ability. Um, next up, we have Latias, who is holding the Colberberry with the ability Levitate, of course, because that's its only ability. And it has Draco Meteor, Hidden Power Fighting, Psychic, and Healing Wish. Draco Meteor because he doesn't actually have a single fairy type on his team, so if if I'm ever in a bad spot, I know I can just go for Draco. He does have four steel types which resist it, which is why we're bringing Hidden Power Fire because it super effectively hits all of them. It even Oko's that Bisharp. Um, Psychic for the Mega Venusaur and the Toxicroak if I need it to be for that. 
The only thing I'm kind of worried about with this set is the Miss Magius, but I'm not quite expecting him to bring it. Um, and the Healing Wish is if maybe Mega Lopunny or uh, Milotic are really low on health, then I can use Healing Wish and sack off Latias once it's at low enough health and bring them back to full and then do a lot more damage with them. But um, getting into its... Oh, first off, it's holding the Colber Berry because with Colber Berry and then that 40 into defense, I will actually live a Sucker Punch from a Bisharp, uh, even if it was Adamant Max Attack Choice Bandit. As long as it doesn't have that boost from either Swords Dance or Defiant, I will live a Sucker Punch and Oak Coat with Hidden Power Fighting. That's the whole point of that. It's sort of like a surprise thing where he thinks he has the advantage, but in actuality he doesn't. Um, the 216 speed is to outspeed, I believe, max speed Timid Hydreigon is what that outspeeds. But I, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I don't remember exactly what it outspeeds, but it'll be pretty fast. It'll be pretty useful to have that speed because I know it all speed quite a bit. And then max special attack, modest nature to increase my damage output. I'm kind of using Latios in more of an offensive role, how I would have used Latios if it were on my team this week. Um, maybe next week or the week after, or something like that, it will be more defensive. I don't know. It all depends on how things go. But moving on, we have Calypso, our Milotic, holding the leftovers again with the ability competitive. And it has Scald, Ice Beam, Recover, and Hit and Power Fighting, again. So it's comp uh, competitive because he only has Defoggers and he has an Intimidator. If he drops my stats, then I get plus two into Special Attack. And I can increase my damage output tremendously with Scald and Ice Beam. And Hit and Power Fighting is mostly to hit the Empoleon, which uh, walls me otherwise with Scald and Ice Beam. But Hit and Power Fighting also Oko's that Bisharp does a lot of damage to Reggie Steel, and it's just good to have on my team especially since he has so many ice and water ways to deal with them I guess um, our EVs it's max defense with 104 HP and 152 in the special attack bold nature so that way it, uh, it becomes kind of a mixed wall with good defense and good special defense the 152 special attack is I think so that it Oko's Bisharp with hidden power fighting then the rest into HP so it can be as wally as possible while still being able to do damage. Um, moving on to our fifth Pokemon, we have Yami, our Kafagrigus, holding the leftovers with the ability Mummy, because it's its only ability, with Will-O-Wisp, Pain Split, Shadow Ball, and Hidden Power Fighting. Um, and its EVs are so that it's max special defense, max HP, and the rest into special attack. This is so that it is, once again, a mixed wall. It can take special hits, it can take physical hits, um, and retaliate with Shadow Ball because he only has two Shadow Ball resists on his team. That would be Bisharp and Hydreigon. And oh, I guess he does have the immunity in Swellow. So I, I stand corrected. But Hidden Power Fighting will Oko that Bisharp, will do a lot of damage to that Hydreigon. And I can switch in Kafagrigus on a lot of different things and retaliate with a Shadow Ball or burn something or recover up with Pain Split. Um, it's just kind of a, a, a general wall similar to my Lodic. And it's really good at being being fat, sitting in the field for a long time, and taking hits. Um, and moving on to the last pick for this team, we have Liability, our Crocodile, holding the Assault Nest with Moxie. Has Earthquake, Crunch, Aqua Tail, and Superpower. Um, I chose Moxie over Intimidate, again because of the Bisharp. If he were to outpredict me and I got the Intimidate drop on the Bisharp instead of something I wanted it to, then he's at plus one. So I just decided to run Moxie instead. Um, the Assault Vest, so then it becomes a true Jolteon stopper because I could switch in on Thunderbolts and Volt Switches. And then with the Ice, or with the Assault Vest, excuse me, Hidden Power Ice and Signal Beam are both three hit KOs and I can Oko with Earthquake. So. Uh, because I have the Assault Vest, I have to have four attacks, so I can't run things like Taunt or Toxic or Stealth Rock on this. That's why Stealth Rock is on uh, uh, Excalibur. So we have Earthquake for General Stab, Crunch for whatever Earthquake doesn't hit, like Miss Magius. Aqua Tail to hit the Landorus, and Super Power to hit all of his Steel types. Um, I don't know how much help 
Crocodile is going to be this week, but nonetheless, oh, and, uh, it's EVs real quick. Max attack, 80 into special defense, and 176 into speed with an adamant nature. That speed, I believe, is to outspeed max speed jolly Bisharp. Um, and then increase my damage output as best as I can with the rest of the special defense so that I can take special hits even better with the assault vest. So there we go, guys. This is my team for the week one battle. We've actually already had this battle, and you should be seeing it. All right, guys, we're here at the battle. Um, looking at the team that he brought, he brought Bisharp, Miss Magius, Venusaur, Heatran, Landorus, and Empoleon. Uh, he, I, ex I honestly expected Bisharp, Venusaur, Heatran, Landorus, and Empoleon, but I wasn't quite expecting the Miss Magius. I'm kind of curious as to what it's going to do. Um... I knew that Bishop was coming just because it does so much damage to my team, but... Uh, so, looking at possible lead matchups, I'm expecting a Landorus lead because of Stealth Rocks, and if it's Scarfed, then he has U-Turn um, initiative. So I'm going to lead off with my Milotic expecting that, so I can fire off an Ice Beam, but I actually predict Rom, and he go he leads off with his Miss Magius. Um, I'm kind of fearing an Energy Ball, potentially, from this Miss Magius, so I'm going to go ahead and switch out, but he's also going to switch out into his Venusaur. Um, probably predicting that so that he can take um, any water type move I can deal out from my Milotic. But I'm going to switch into my Crocodile, um, uh, knowing I can live something with the Assault Vest, but I can't live a Giga Drain from a Mega Venusaur. So I'm going to switch into my Skarmory, because it quad resists Grass, and I'm completely immune to Poison. So he's going to fire off a Sludge Bomb, does absolutely nothing, and now I'm in a good position. I'm just going to set up Rocks, but he actually goes for the Hidden Power Fire, and I didn't expect that on this Mega Venusaur. So now I'm kind of in a bad position. So, but at least Brock's are up. He's forced to defog them away at some point if he doesn't want to keep taking residual damage every time he switches in. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to switch into my Latias, knowing I can take any special hit from the Venusaur. But he actually predicts that pretty nicely and goes into his Empoleon. And now he has the upper hand with Ice Beam. And I can't take an Ice Beam from my Latias because I want to keep it as healthy as possible. So I'm going to switch into my Milotic because I know I can take an Ice Beam. I know I can take a water move if he went for that. And if he does defog, then I get the competitive boost. So he goes off to, he does go for an Ice Beam. Um, I eat that up very well. And now he's just going to go for a defog to get rid of the rocks. As I go for a Hidden Power Fighting and reveal that he had the Chopple Berry, I'm assuming so that he could take a Fighting type move hit from uh, the Mega Low Punny. But I wasted it now, and that's a very good thing, unfortunately. Now he knows that I've hit him power fighting, and recognizes that his Mega Venusaur walls my my load. Um, I go for hidden power fighting, hopefully hoping to get off damage on the Empoleon, but I knew he was gonna switch out, there's just not much I can do. So I'm gonna switch into my Latias once again, based upon the logic that I can take any special hit from this Mega Venusaur. And he's gonna go for a Giga Dream. Um, I eat that up very nicely. And I'm going to go for a Psychic, hopefully do a lot of damage to this Mega Venusaur, but he predicts that and goes into his Heatran, which, uh, the way he brings this in on my body house reveals to me that he could possibly be especially defensive. I ran the Calx and 15% from a Psychic with the body house set that I'm running, that is definitely especially defensive with leftovers. So I'm going to switch into my Crocodile, knowing I can take any special hit with my Assault Vest, and he's going to go for the Magma Storm. So, I wasn't quite expecting Magma Storm, I was thinking maybe Fire Blast or Lava Plume. But, um, he goes for the Magma Storm and now I'm trapped. I can't switch out this turn. So I'm gonna go for an Aqua Tail, predicting him to switch into his Landorus because of the Intimidate Drop and he would have been immune to Earthquake if I had gone for that. And even if he had stayed in with Heatran, Aqua Tail would have done some damage, not very much. But nonetheless, I go for the Aqua Tail on the Landorus. And I'm going to switch out now that the Heatran is gone, I'm no longer trapped for Magma Storm. I'm going to switch into my Skarmory because I know I can take any hit I want from the Landorus. And he's just going to take this opportunity to set up his rocks, which is okay because I coincidentally brought in my Defogger. Now I'm going to set up rocks on my own as he goes for a Stone Edge, and that does quite a bit of damage. It's 24%, which means I won't live another one even after Leftovers Recovery. <laughs> so I know I have to switch out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch out into my Cofagrigus, which is my next best wall. Um, I actually disconnect right here, but I reconnect in time, thankfully. And I switch into my Cofagrigus, um, knowing I can take pretty much any hit. And he goes for the U-turn, predicting me to switch out. The Mummy gets rid of his Intimidate, but that doesn't matter because um, he's switching out anyways. Um, and he brings in his Empoleon, which I thought was kind of a strange thing. I guess so, it's his special wall. 
But I don't want to reveal to him that I have hidden power fighting on this Coffee Grievous yet, so I'm just going to go for a Shadow Balls. He's going to go for a Default and get rid of, uh, rid of his rocks. That also gets rid of the rocks on my side, so that's also kind of a beneficial thing. And I actually get the special defense drop when I go for the Shadow Ball, which means after running some calcs, hidden power fighting actually does have a chance to uh, kill now. But I unfortunately get a low roll and it won't kill him as he goes for a Hydro Pump and it does quite a bit of damage, but I can live one more. So I know, I'm just going to get my Coffer Grigus real low because I know I can pain split on something assuming I don't die from it because I definitely want to speed it, but he actually gets a crit with his Hydro Pump and kills my Coffer Grigus, which is unfortunate, but it's Pokemon, it happens, it's whatever. So I'm going to take this opportunity and just go into my Mega Low Punny and get the Mega Evolution up because he definitely doesn't want to stay in. So he is going to switch out into his Mega Venusaur, knowing he can take pretty much any hit, because Mega Venusaur has a lot of good physical defense. Um, and I'm going to predict that and go for a return. Um, this does 44%, which means I need two more returns to kill it. I'm just going to do one more, knowing I can probably live any hit he wants to give me, with pretty low health, but I'll live it nonetheless. And he goes for Sludge Bomb and unfortunately gets the poison. That puts me uh, Mega Low Punny on a bit more of a timer. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and now Mega Low Punny won't be able to do as much as, nearly as much as I had expected it to. So I'm going to go for the Low Kick in case he wanted to switch in one of his Steel types that were resisted in my return. Um, and it would have killed Mega Venusaur either way. Um, and right now he's going to switch into the Landorus and get the Intimidate drop. I definitely can't stay in and go for an Ice Punch because I'll die to any hit. And he's going to predict that. Um, and I go into my Skarmory. He's going to predict that and go for the U-turn. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, really nice play on his part, because now he has the advantage. He's going to go into his Heatran, knowing that I'd be threatened out by his potential Fire-type move. Um, but what I'm going to do is actually just sack off my Skarmory. I'm going to go for the Stealth Rock on the off chance I outspeed or he mispredicts or something like that. And he actually goes for the Taunt, and revealing Taunt to me was actually kind of a very important thing, because... Um, I have a lot of support moves on my team, and if they're taunted, I can't use them too much to full advantage. So, um, I decided to eventually preserve my Skarmory, and I'm going to switch into my Milotic, knowing I can take a Magma Storm very well. And I'm just going to go for a Scald, um, do some damage to this Heatran. It's going to be a 3-hit KO because it is so specially defensive. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm a little sick, guys, I'm sorry. But um, I'm going to go for a Scald. He's going to eat that up pretty well. So he goes for a Toxic. That puts my Milotic on a, on a timer, which is a bad thing for my Milotic because it's meant to be a wall and it's meant to stay there for a long time. He goes for the Taunt, I'm assuming to prevent me from using Recover. I'm just going to fire off another Scald. He won't live another Scald even after the Leftovers Recovery. So I'm going to go for one more Scald and just get my Milotic, unfortunately, down to pretty low health. But then he reveals that he actually has to Protect. So the Protect, what it's going to do, it's, it's going to increase the damage on my top on that toxic on my Milotic, and it's also going to bring him back to health high enough with the leftovers so that he can live one more Scald. And I'm thinking to myself, uh, now I'm in a really bad position with my Milotic. So I'm just going to go for another Scald. As he switches out to his Empoleon to sack it off, get, some, get something in that can do a little bit more damage um, and put some pressure on me. <laughs> And uh, fortunately, with the Leftovers Recovery, I actually will live one more Toxic, and the Magma Storm wears off this turn. Which means, as well as the Taunt, but that's less important. Um, which means that my, my Lodic actually is around, and I can use it to sack it off later as I switch into my Crocodile right here. Knowing with the Assault Vest, I could take a Magma Storm. He actually just goes for the Taunt again, which is fine because my Crocodile is Assault Vest and it only has attacking moves, so I don't mind it being taunted. And um, I'm going to go for an Aqua Tail once again, predicting the Landorus switch in. Um, with the with the Intimidate drop being such an important thing on his Landorus, not doing as much as I would like with these Aqua Tails. <coughs> so I'm going to have to switch out again because I won't live a U-turn. I'm going to switch into Skarmory once again because it's turned into this Landorus wall. He can't touch it, and he's going to um, just take this opportunity to set up his Stealth Rocks again. As am I. <laughs> I'm going to go for Stealth Rocks and set them up again, because now he um, lost his Defogger. Those Stealth Rocks are there to stay. So he's going to go into his Heatran as I go for my Rocks and set them up, and I'm just going to sack off my Skarmory. <coughs> it's done its job of get up the Rocks. I don't mind the, the Rocks being on my side too much anymore, and he's going to go for Magma Storm and I die. I, I think I went for Spikes on the off chance I lived. 
or he missed or something like that, just to get more damage out, especially on that Bisharp and that key train every time they switch out. But those rocks are there to stay, which is good. So I'm going to bring in my Crocodile, and once again, he's going to switch in his Landorus, and I'm going to go for Aqua Tail. Gets a bit repetitive, but that's all I can really do in this situation. It's such an obvious switch, I have to predict it. <laughs> um, so with the Intimidate drop, he actually, and with the Leftovers Recovery, he will gain enough health so that he can live one more Aqua Tail. Um, I'm just going to go for it again, because I feel like Crocodile has done its job. It's whittled down a lot of Pokemon, and um, I just died to a U-turn. But he, I think he makes the mistake of going for a U-turn here, because now I have the switch advantage. He can switch into anything he wants, and then I can switch into anything I want in retaliation to that. So he switches in his Heatran. Um, I, uh, I, I acted a bit hasty here, and I switch in my Megalopon, you know I can, knowing I can live a rock switch in. And I can go, okay, I'll just kill this thing with a low kick. But I forgot that he has Protect, and he'll be able to... I'll die to the poison damage. So I'm going to switch into Latios instead, because I want to keep Megalopony around. And now, at this point, my strategy, I have to rely on Healing Wish over to my Megalopony. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start firing off some Hidden Power Fightings, and that's actually how the rest of these turns go. <coughs> do as much damage um, to everything is possible and he goes for the taunt which kind of puts me in a bad position which means because I have to now wait for the taunt to wear off before I can use healing wish to heal up my mega low punny so he's just gonna go for toxic um and protect and wait whittle down my Latias which is fine with me him going for protect because that wastes a turn of taunt so I'm just gonna keep going for hidden power fighting he lives with one percent and this is the magma storm that was actually kind of huge Although it wouldn't have done that much, it would have brought me down to the point where the next toxic damage after this would have killed me. So um, the taunt wears off, I go for one more hidden power fighting. Toxic brings me down to 10%, and he brings in the Bisharp, assuming that he can go for Sucker Punch and kill me. But I predict that, and I go for the Healing Wish. I'm able to bring um, my low punny back to full health and get rid of the poison. And now I'm in a very good position to win. Um, he's going to switch in his Landorus to sack it off and get rid of my Fake Out pressure. I didn't even go for Fake Out. I went for Low Kick. But that's okay. Um, he's going to switch in his Miss Magius and it's going to die to a return. And then Bisharp is going to die to a Low Kick. And that's going to be the game, guys. We are 1-0. We took a very close 2-0 victory over the Accrington Stantler and their coach, Nuflus. <coughs> <coughs> it's a very good battle. Week two, we play the Washington Blazikins and their coach, Sacred Thunder. Uh, hopefully, you guys will be able to see that video as well. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the, some of the other GPSL coaches down in the description. And um, I hope you guys enjoy it.